Over the past four years, teachers at Harvard School in Gloucester have been developing a new way of teaching geography. Anxious that the National Numeracy and Literacy Hours were not meeting the needs of all their pupils, they changed the way the curriculum was delivered. Their approach, which has become known as the City Curriculum, makes a break with teaching subjects as separate disciplines and marks a move towards theme teaching, using the city's rich resources to bring geography teaching alive. It was developed initially by head teacher Richard Martin. The city has a cathedral, a major river, it's a city with a great historic tradition. It seems to me that that's an ideal starting point for study, but it's also something, because it's so close, you can return to and study in greater detail, go into things in more depth, or study from a different angle or a different vantage point. To understand how this approach is being implemented at Harwood, we've filmed two examples of the city curriculum in action. Kelly Staniforth and a group of volunteers are about to take her year three class on a field trip to learn how places change over time. The city curriculum is based around experiential learning on the principle that you learn far more by experiencing the objective than just being told about it. And in essence, that's what we try to create. All these things Becky Ballinger's Year 4 class are using the River Severn as a source for work in science and geography. Very, very small fish, about that big. Minnows. So minnows, good boy. So you get minnows, bullheads, dace, which all live near the source of the River Severn. By doing something like this, where they're actually looking at real things, they're, they're far more able to remember what they've learned, and it's more significant for them than if they were just reading a worksheet and collecting information from it. It's, it's bringing everything back to life, I suppose. So how did this approach develop? For Richard Martin, it was his experience of topic teaching as a class teacher and the more recent demands of the national curriculum that led him to look at more creative ways of teaching. When I started teaching, which was 30 odd years ago, that's the way we did it, uh, and we did it very well in the school that I was in, and yeah, I would have no doubts that that school, if presented now, would stand up to scrutiny in terms of the, the standard of work, the, the attainment in the basic subjects of maths and English and science, but we did it in a very interesting way. That particular approach was uh, discredited, really, and it became more and more important that children were able to read, to write, literacy and numeracy became the most important things to be presented in the primary school, and quite rightly so, and a whole organisation then of teaching strategies were, were built around that. But I, I think those of us working in schools with young children started to see and to feel that doing more and more of the same thing wasn't necessarily helpful, and for those children particularly who struggled, they actually it was almost becoming counterproductive. It became more and more difficult for them. Today, Kelly's class are doing some field work, looking at change in their local environment. Kelly has invited a former teacher from Harwood, Martin Ellis, to talk about the changes in Tuffley he's seen in his lifetime. He's going to take the class on a tour of the local area. Lovely to see you all year three, and uh, parents and uh, grandparents as well, I think. So, uh, I don't want to say too much so we want to get out and have a look but I understand from Miss Stanley Forth you've been looking at maps maps of Tuffley what it was like about 60 or 70 years ago I can't remember that long back since you've been in the juniors what changes have you seen um, a new fence a new fence that big green fence all the way around yes new development whereabouts Right round Tuffley. Yeah, there's been some new developments in Tuffley, yes. And they've built new flats and houses. New flats and houses. Has that made any changes around here, the houses and flats being built? Has it been a bit harder for you to cross the road sometimes because of all the big lorries going through? Yes. yes. yes? Now, if we go back when I was your age, I went to the infant school, Grange Infants, and I used to walk along Grange Road. What do you think I saw as I went along there? Um, fields. Fields. That's right. Lots and lots of fields, but not very many houses. OK, we're going to leave school um, through the front, so we're going to go past through Harwood Close. Kelly's class have maps of the local area, as it was before the Second World War. Their task is to identify how Tuffley's changed over the past 60 years. 
Look at your map for me now, because you'll remember that this map is has been lifted from a 1939 map, and this is our school just here. Well, our school wasn't built that long ago, but I've put it on there to give you a better idea as to where things are in relation to where you are. So we're going to leave school and we're going to have a go at putting different roads onto this map as we go along. We're using the local area to enhance what we have to actually cover in the curriculum anyway. So we've picked things to complement our topics and we plan visits and use the resources that are local to it, especially in geography where a lot of it is to do with map work and change. And of course that links in with the science of environmental issues. On the map, on the little bit coming down from the school, I would like you to mark in Harwood Close. And it's not just local landmarks, but also local knowledge that can help bring teaching alive. Mr Ellis has lived here all his life, so he's just a wonderful resource, and that's fairly typical of how we do things with city curricula. And we make the most not only of the physical resources around here, but also the human resources. Yeah. OK, I'll do that then. When you teach young children... Uh, through a theme, through a, a topic, through a focus on a particular activity that's there in real life, it gives you the opportunity to hit a number of requirements through the national curriculum in one go, rather than the way it was developing where everything was done in, in a separate box and you had to spend an hour on literacy, an hour on numeracy, and then maybe in the afternoon, half an hour on history, um, what lies behind the, the, the approach that we've developed is that you actually need time. Children need time to follow something through and to produ produce work that's of the sort of high quality that we expect. Who can think back to last Becky's year four class continues the study of the River Severn. In both of those lessons. We've well, been learning about the River Severn. We have, good girl. And can you think about what exactly we've been learning about the River Severn? Harry? Um, the mouth. Good boy, we've learnt about the mouth of the river. What is the mouth, Harry? Um, the bottom of the river several what goes into the sea. Good boy, it's the bottom of the river and it links into the sea itself. Who can try and tell me something about perhaps near the source of the river or the middle of the river or the estuary? The differences between those three places. Why do we get fast flowing water at the source? Ainsley. Her class are organised into three different activity groups, each one using the river topic to enrich the curriculum. Today we're having a carousel lesson, so it's doing three activities at the same time, one of which will be teacher-led and two which will be independent activities. I'm going to be looking at, first of all, art, because for some children that's the area that they really shine in. And our art is all to do with the river and the fish in the river. They're going to be looking at the tiny marks on the fish and they're going to be trying to replicate those onto paper using a different selection of pencils. The very heart of the city curriculum is to offer to young people first-hand experiences which basically attract their interest, make them go, wow, make them want to find out about things and also to give them the opportunity to use the arts to use dance, to use drama, to explore the world around them. Children learn in a variety of ways. Uh, they don't all learn in the same way, and some children can learn very effectively in a classroom situation where the teacher is teaching them, but not all children learn effectively like that. Can you have a look and see what's opposite to us now? Can you see the house here? Look across the road from where we are at the moment, please. Now, this, this used to be a dairy. What do you get in a dairy? Yeah, what do you buy in milk. a dairy? Milk, yes. And where do they get the milk from to sell here? Cows. Yeah, the cows. And where were the cows? Farms. On the farms. And what do we have along here? Lots of farms, didn't we? So probably the milk was brought from the farms to the dairy here. Now have a good look at the houses there. Can you see how many changes there are on those houses? Can you see what's being done to them? Anything? Can you see anything that's being done? There's new windows. 
there's the window right there. Yes. Next to the black pole, and then next to it, it looks like there used to be a door there. That's right. There used to be a door there. What about the chimney pot? Have you got a chimney pot like that on your house? No. No, you haven't, have you? That's old. Where my mum used to live? Yeah. Just up here. Yeah. She lived in this house. She was born here. Yeah. By doing a trip and actually going out and looking at places, it helps the children to access the activity regardless of their ability and their skills. So many skills are included and the actual experience allows them to take far more away with them in terms of their understanding than they would have otherwise done in a classroom situation if they were merely looking at textbooks, for example. The main study is obviously about geography, but other subjects will come into discussion and into the planning. Uh, the teacher obviously will plan for those things to happen. For example, there'll be quite a, a, a significant element of science in the work because obviously fish live in the river. The fish can be taken out from the river and studied closely. They, they can in fact be dis dissected and look at what's inside the fish. And um, we're entering sort of unknown territory then, if you like, between the, the child and the teacher. Um, and probably at that stage, we're moving beyond the key stage two curriculum into maybe key stage three. Right, you're very close. These two are called the pelvic fins here. What these do, you know, when we stand up, we're balanced. And if we stand on one leg, we're not balanced. If that didn't have that fin, it wouldn't be balanced. So that controls balance and how much it rolls around. I think it's an important part of learning to keep them interested and to keep them enthused about what they're doing so that they want to learn, rather than coming to school and learning being a process where they're, they're being taught something and then, they, and then they write about it. The purpose of the fieldwork is to help Kelly's class develop an understanding of how places may change in the future. But that's going to close down soon, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So if we come along here in a year's time and did the same, what do you think might be in here? While the teachers on the ground may be enthusiastic about it, is the evidence to show the integrated approach really works? Ofsted certainly thinks so. Its 2004 report on the school said the city curriculum is having a huge impact on teaching and learning. Teachers at Harwood have developed a curriculum which they and Ofsted believe enriches their pupils' understanding of geography. And with its local approach, it's a method that can be used in any school. Homewood Drive. Was Homewood Drive there when you were little? No. no? Excellent then. Great example. Um, there's something opposite Homewood Drive. You can remember what that feature was. The garage. The garage, yes, the petrol station. My hope there? for the future is that people will see the sense of giving young people the opportunities to learn through this kind of approach. It's, it's not a, a unique approach and schools have to find their own way but I think the essential part for working with young children whether it be geography or any other subject they've got to enjoy what they're doing they've got to have a consistency about it and they've got to develop that desire to want to learn more and to start to appreciate at that young age the importance of learning because if they get turned off which I think many have been through doing just maths and English it's very difficult to turn them back on. Mm -hmm.